I went to bed, I was, you know, really pleased with how things had turned out. And then in the morning, woke up to find the garment rail basically leaning and on its last legs. The damn thing basically looked drunk. Closed the door, crack. I had unfortunately placed my bag on it and cracked the glass. I was literally incensed. So I have had a little bit of a fail in my walk-in closet upstairs and in my hand I am holding this hanging rail that should not be in my hand but hanging on the wall of my closet room upstairs. So later on in this video I'm going to share with you guys exactly what happened and what I have done to try to fix it. I'm also going to give you guys insight into some of the key updates that I have made in my walk-in closet since the last video. I'll also share the key design features in that space in case you are looking to do anything similar. So let's get straight into the video. The first update that I am gonna start with is the mirror. So in case you were not aware, I had seven bespoke mirrors fitted in this property. And the reason why I went bespoke is because I essentially have paneled or added molding to all the walls in this property. So I knew very early on that I was not gonna find ready-made or shop-bought mirrors that would fit into the paneling designs that I had created. I was also really keen to ensure the paneling would fit flush with the mirrors and almost wanted the paneling to act as frames for the mirrors. So logically, going bespoke was the only option. What I'm sharing with you guys now are the beveled edges of the mirror. So this one, of course, is in my walk-in closet, but all the mirrors I had fitted are beveled. This is a very important point to take into account if you are thinking about doing something similar. Whilst I was having my consultation with the company that fitted my mirrors, it dawned on me that the actual depth of the paneling was a lot more shallow than the depth of the mirror, meaning the depth of the paneling was about three millimeters and the depth of my mirrors would have been six millimeters. So if I had not beveled the edges, the mirrors would basically have protruded from the paneling and not fit that well. So I was so, so happy that common sense prevailed and I asked the company to bevel all the edges, which obviously means that it slightly decreases the depth and allows it to fit much, much more perfectly with the paneling. The big caveat though is, you will see later on in this video, if it's not clear already, that I was not able to fit my mirror flush with the original paneling that I actually created in my walk-in closet. And the reason for that is that I had a socket that was basically in the way. Typically what these companies tend to do is they will cut around the obstacles and then fit the mirror over the obstacles so it looks like it was perfectly designed for that space. But because my socket was too close to the paneling, it would have meant that the end of the mirror would have been too fragile. And therefore what we ended up agreeing was that we would fit the mirror above the socket. But of course, the issue that arose is that my mirror would not fit flush with my paneling. So it just looked a little bit strange to be completely honest with you. So I had to think of a plan B that would still allow me to achieve my ambition of having the paneling almost act as a frame for the mirror. So what I ended up deciding to do was to have another panel added literally around the edges of the mirror in its location so that you would almost have a double panel effect. So it took me absolutely ages to get to the point where this was done because mind you, the mirrors were fitted after my major renovation works had actually been done. It was obviously a very specialist company that did it. So it wasn't, you know, the same people that obviously renovated the main property that I am in now. And therefore it just took me absolutely ages to get to the point where I actually had the paneling fitted around the mirror. Some of you guys might wonder why I just didn't do it myself. The truth is I am just not a DIYer, guys. I wish I was. I really admire all those lovely people out there that can DIY and do these things themselves. If I really tried hard and really wanted to, I probably would figure it out. The truth is 
I don't have the patience, the time, or the skill to get the outcomes that I wanted. So long story short, in this video, you're gonna see that the mirror now has finally got paneling around it. And I'm actually gonna share with you guys the paneling that I use because it wasn't the same company that I had ordered the original paneling from. So I had to find a very, very similar profile of paneling to make sure it looked all uniform. So again, in case you're doing anything similar, this is the paneling that I basically use. I think this one is actually one that I ordered from B&Q. It has a very particular profile that you might be able to see on screen here. I'm not sure if you're seeing it. I'm gonna try and share the shorter one so it's a little bit clearer. So obviously, I say obviously, I'm hoping that you guys are aware that paneling comes in lots of different widths, depths, profiles. So my original paneling that I created for the mirror to fit into was a, is a very, very similar profile, if not the same profile to this that you can see here. So it took me a little bit of time to find the appropriate profile. Um, the company that I had ordered the original pan paneling from only do bulk orders. You have to order minimum 14 meters. And of course, I did not need that much, hence why I had to find another company. And that company is B and Q. So this paneling here that I'm showing with you guys is from B and Q. And this here is essentially, I'm gonna share with you guys what I mean about the depth. So can you see the depth here? So my mirror was six millimeters in depth and this panel here is probably about three. So that's what I meant by depth. So you can obviously buy this from B&Q or Homebase or any DIY store that sells the stuff and do it yourself. I just don't have the skill or the patience. To be fair, the person that ended up doing it did an okay job. The imperfections that exist will definitely be covered with my painter who is eventually gonna come and paint the panel. So it all fits in seamlessly with the original paneling. So it's not been painted yet. You will see what the new paneling looks like now that it has been fitted around the mirror later on in this video, because now I want to talk about the wall hung garment rails, because when I was initially thinking about styles and design for my walk-in closet, I did consider two types of options. The truth is there was always only ever one front runner. However, I definitely considered having built-in carpentry and built-in cupboards and going for a traditional style closet. But the truth is, given the size of that room, I knew that going for that option would have meant that I would have lost floor space, but also I feel that room would have felt a little bit too claustrophobic and therefore, I went for a boutique style closet, but again, that was always truly the preference anyway. So I then went on the hunt for wall hung garment rails that would really help me create my boutique vibe. And I ended up finding a company that met my needs in terms of aesthetics, but also in terms of quality as well. And you can see that I eventually had my garment rails fitted onto my walls. I actually also created my molding specifically to house a lot of the garment rails that you can see here. So everything was hunkadori and beautiful and my vision was coming to life, which was so exciting. And actually post having them fitted, I realized that I could probably fit one more garment rail into the space. Who doesn't want more space to fit in more garments and clothes? So I think I mentioned to you guys in a previous closet update that I was going to potentially fit one more rail between the two chests of drawers that you can see here. So I ordered the hanging rail and then had it fitted professionally and was so excited to place new garments and items onto the new rails. That area was gonna be one where I placed new pieces that I was really excited to work into my closet. So once it had been fitted and I had placed the garment rails on, I went to bed, I was you know, really pleased with how things had turned out. And then in the morning, woke up to find the garment rail basically leaning and on its last legs. The damn thing basically looked drunk and it dawned on me that it hadn't really worked for whatever reason. The person that fitted the 
the additional garment rail was not the same person that fitted the original ones. I have to say the original ones to this day are in, you know, tip top condition. There's no leaning. They were fitted really, really well. I actually think the issue might have been that the person that fitted um, the additional garment rail didn't use the right wool plugs because again, the first fitter did an excellent job and to this day you know the garment rails fit you know sit sit should i say perfectly and i have had no issues so as mentioned the garment rail was leaning it looks super drunk so i decided to basically just take it off the walls and i was so sad to see massive holes in my walls but took it as a challenge to basically a fill in the holes myself and then b fit the garment rail again in a different location. Same location, I should say, between the two chests of drawers that I have here, but slightly underneath the original um, markings that had been made. So this was really my attempt at DIY. I mentioned earlier that I don't really do DIY, but I wanted the challenge and got myself, my, got out my power drill. I even bought some poly filler. I had a, you know my spatulas, so I got to work on filling the previous holes, but also again, um, creating a new place to fit the garment rails. And I was so proud, I managed to do it. I even checked on my little spirit level that everything was level and got to basically um, trying out how my garments would look in the new location. Because mind you, because it was slightly lower, that obviously limits the length of clothes that you can add into or onto the garment rail. So I tested it and everything looked okay for about 15 minutes and then it started to lean again and it became even clearer that that area for whatever reason was not going to be suitable for the hanging rails that I had purchased. So one thing I will say again is that the previous fitter or rails I have had no issues with but if you want to know do make sure that you get somebody that understands the right types of plugs to use. I ended up buying my own plugs. I'm not a DIYer, so I'm not even sure if the plugs that I used were the best ones. I did read the labels, obviously, and it looked like the right type of plugs, but it just didn't seem to work. And therefore I had to admit defeat and realize that that space and that area with this hanging rail just was not going to work. And therefore I opted to find another solution which i'll talk to you guys about now this is what i ended up going with a floor hanging garment well instead and i bought this one from the finished shop so i will link it below in case you are interested so this option made the cut for a few reasons the first reason is that it was the exact width that i was looking for it took me absolutely ages to find this width and it is 50 centimeters wide so that it fits perfectly between the two chests of drawers that I showed you earlier. I was also really keen to ensure that I found a solution that was not too high because I'm going to end up having a beautiful art piece placed above my two chests of drawers and I do not want anything to disrupt or distract from that art piece once it is finally in place. Of course, what's also great about this particular option is that it does, of course, match the black color of the wall hang rails that I already have. So it blends in, I think, quite well. In addition, it's a very sleek, slimline design, very Scandinavian, and therefore that was another reason as to why I felt it was a really good option. So in terms of the key features of this, um, it has, I would say, one main hanging option. I will probably show you in another video the maximum length of items that you can have on this particular rail. It's not gonna be appropriate for really long coats, but again, I will cover in a separate video how long um, the, uh, the maximum item can be for this particular hanging option. What's also great is that it is made of wood. Hopefully you can see the beautiful graining in the wood. It has this really lovely matte um, paint that has been used to paint it, which I really like. I'm 
definitely more of a matte person than a gloss person um, and therefore this one was really really lovely in terms of its matte paint it also has um, the option to hang I would say hats on the corners at the top there you could also um, hang scarves on the kind of upper rails so there are options to potentially add different types of items beyond just clothes onto this hanging rail me personally i'm going to keep it really simple and just use it to hang garments and not hats or any scarves or anything of that nature so again it was the best option that met my specifications it took me absolutely ages to find this option the one thing that i will say is that i do think that it is slightly overpriced for what it is so yes it is well made yes it does have great design and aesthetics it definitely is wood however it does feel really flimsy and doesn't feel very substantial so it feels like you could easily knock it over and for that reason the price for me just didn't feel like it was appropriate or quite right however it was the only solution that i found that met my needs and my requirements and therefore i was happy to pay it but again i'm not entirely sure the price is justified or fair but you can be your own judge Again, I will link it below. The other thing that is really great is that it is portable, so you can move it to different locations if you wish. That is definitely a plus. So we are now going to talk about art, and I am going to have two key art pieces that really bring my interiors together in my walk-in closet. I mentioned earlier that I will have one that goes above the chest of drawers, and the one that I'm gonna share with you guys in this video is going to go above what used to be the fireplace. I've had it framed, it has been fitted. And actually, as this video progresses, you will start to piece together what that art piece actually is. I recently also did a video where I talked you guys through the framing process, the cost of framing. Thankfully, for this particular piece of art, I did not have to spend a thousand pounds to have it framed. I used the same framers and I'm going to share with you guys the framing options that I actually considered. I knew for my walk-in closet, unlike my living room, that I wanted to go for black frames to really, really complement my wall-hung garment rails, of course. It just felt like the right option. Gold was never really a consideration. The one thing that I did consider, though, was which material to go for. I did consider to have wood frames, but ended up realizing that actually, given you've got metal wall hanging garment rails, it makes sense to go for a metal frame. So that is essentially what I ended up leaning towards. The framers did offer different types of finishes, gloss for example, but the truth is I'm not really a gloss girl when it comes to metals mostly and therefore I went for a black matte frame, a thin frame like the one that you can see here in this image here and I'm sure you've already guessed what the actual art piece is. It is so stunning, so beautiful. I love it to pieces. The one thing that I will let you guys know is that I actually had to have this art piece, art piece framed twice. The first time I had it framed in glass and I went to pick it up. The framers showed it to me. I loved it, got into my Uber, closed the door, crack. I had unfortunately placed my bag on it and cracked the glass. I was literally incensed i was livid and ended up basically just sitting there for at least 10 seconds hoping that i was dreaming and unfortunately i was not and took the broken framed art piece back into the shop left it there and had to go through the whole process again so it was quite traumatic i'm not gonna lie so this is essentially essentially sorry the second time i've had this art piece framed and because of that traumatic experience, I ended up framing it in acrylic and not glass. So what I'm actually gonna do is place side by side the acrylic option and the glass option and let me know if you can actually tell the difference. And I'm sure you've already guessed it, guys. The art piece is none other than the stunning Naomi Campbell. I love Naomi Campbell and she is just giving me goddess vibes in this piece here. I've, wanted this piece or saw this piece a while a long time ago to be fair and i knew that it would be perfect in this home and of course 
it couldn't go anywhere other than my closet, right? She's giving high fashion, of course. So this, guys, is the art piece that I basically am going to place above my fireplace. I even had a specific area created for art, not this particular piece, but this particular piece ended up being the one that would adorn the space that I created. So as this video progresses, you're gonna see more of this art piece. You're gonna see it on the wall in different angles and different lights. So stay tuned to see what this beautiful art piece actually ends up looking like in situ. I should also mention that I absolutely love the tones and the colors of this Naomi Campbell art piece, the gold accents in the art piece, I think complement the gold accents in my closet really, really well. I also think that it complements the Eve Saint Laurent cape that I bought a while ago, which you can see here. This gorgeous, rich camel color just seems to go again so beautifully with the tones and the colors in this art piece, and I love it. One thing I will say as a tip is that if you are buying cashmere pieces like this one or wool pieces or silk pieces, do consider finding ways to protect your items from moths. Luckily, I've never been too significantly affected to be honest with you. However, that is not a risk I want to take for really expensive pieces. So all I did here was to buy um, mothballs from Amazon. And then I also bought these little tiny muslin bags and I placed them in the bag and then hang them basically off some of my more, more um, uh, luxury pieces. Basically, if it's wool, it's cashmere or a silk, it will have either a bag of these in the pocket or the hanger. And apparently this is a really effective way of keeping those pesky, pesky moths at bay. Speaking of the gold accents, I eventually had handles placed on my inbuilt cupboards. So this cupboard here actually used to be a fireplace and I worked with my builders to widen the fireplace and effectively convert it into additional internal storage. And previously it didn't have any handles on it. And to be honest with you, it doesn't really need handles because it has a particular um, way of closing. I can't remember the name that doesn't require you to have handles. So it's kind of like a push function. However, aesthetically, I always wanted to have handles just because I think they look much better. And these particular handles that I ordered are from Dowsing and Reynolds. I will link them below in case you are looking for anything similar. They are also quite similar to the handles that I use in my kitchen. I just love this really intricate diamond cut detailing that you can hopefully see here but yes these are definitely updates and a new addition to my um walk-in closet keeping again with the gold theme you will know that i ordered these beautiful chests of drawers from swoon editions a while ago when i initially ordered them i was a little bit worried that the actual um, gold handles would be too shiny but over time you might be able to see that they have definitely patinaed and now they look a little bit more antique um, and less shiny and therefore I have no plans to change these because I think they've turned out actually pretty pretty well so the chest of drawers do come with a marble top so I would say that, that is a really good feature that really led me to choosing this option. They are so much more affordable than the option that I was initially going to go for. I won't even tell you how much that option was because it was basically the price of a small car. So when it comes to this particular chest of drawers, if they are still available, I will link them. I would say in terms of quality, I would give them a six and a half, seven out of 10. Um, but for what they are, I think they really, really do um, add great value into my closet space and they house most of my, um, I would say, skirts, trousers, you know, and, and items that obviously aren't currently hanging onto my hanging rails. You will also notice that I am someone that does not like to have a lot on my countertops. If you've seen my kitchen uh, in the updates that I've shared, I rarely have anything on my kitchen countertops. And that is quite similar to how I approach my chest of drawers. I do have a few items here that currently don't really have anywhere to go. Mainly um, the boxes that you can see here, they will eventually go elsewhere. 
but um, the main point is I do enjoy a clean, clear countertop, um, particularly um, if it is marble. I just think the aesthetics of marble, ca ma marble, marble, marble countertops lend themselves well to just being you know beautifully on um, display so i thought it would be useful to speak a little bit to how i'm currently organizing the clothes in my closet so as mentioned earlier i do have foldable items in my chest of drawers but when it comes to my hanging rails there are a few things that do inform what i basically place where when it comes to the area that you can see here, which is basically the hanging area that you first see when you walk into my closet. This is the area where there aren't really any rules. Here I have a combination of every single type of item, meaning jackets, meaning tops, meaning trousers, day wear, evening wear. For me, this area is just a curation of things that I like the look of together. But as you move into the upper wall hanging areas, there is definitely a lot more of a system and rhyme and reason to what gets placed where. So I tend to have um, black tops all in one rail and then also have um, a combination of different colored tops also on one rail. And then I like to have really, really um, neutral or white colors, the closer you get to where my art piece above my chest of drawers is eventually going to go again, because the ambition is to really not have anything that distracts or disrupts from that art piece when it does eventually go into that space. But again, that is the main reason as to why I tend to have much more neutral colors in the um, rails that are much closer to where my art piece is eventually going to go. I actually didn't used to have my Eve Saint Laurent cape in that area, but I randomly, as I mentioned, realized how incredibly the colors of that cape complement the color of the art, and therefore I moved it into the location that it is currently in now, and I think it looks really, really lovely. I love the idea of actually matching or using your fashion items to complement the art pieces and art pieces in terms of how you style them something that i had never really thought about or considered before but i think it works really really well in this instance there is definitely a lot more curating to do but for now i'm really liking how things are looking so you can see guys that there are definitely some updates that have been made in this space we've got again the molding finally around the mirror we've got new handles in the inbuilt cupboards we have of course added a new hanging space after the massive fails that i had with the wall hung um, options we then also have my beautiful art piece that i just think complements this space so incredibly well it's giving fashion it's giving goddess and just does you know this space such an amazing service and i love it so so much let me know what you think Thank you.